So I finally watched Godzilla vs. Kong just the other night. I almost even just considered making a review about this movie because I don't really know if it needs a review. I don't really know how much needs to be said about this film. Now I know this movie dropped a couple months ago and being in Canada we just got it on Crave TV like I don't know, a couple weeks ago, maybe even last week. It was it was quite recent. And it's funny, like when this movie was coming out, I really wanted to watch it because I knew it was like a culmination of a bunch of movies. And we're finally getting to see like Kong and Godzilla meet up with one another. And like, when was it? 2016, 2017, when we all found out there was going to be a Godzilla vs. Kong film. So it's been quite some time. So I wanted to know how this was all gonna play out. But you know, when we didn't get it in Canada, uh, right when it released, just kind of over time, I was like, okay, I just started losing interest in it. And I already got the sense that this movie was just gonna be nothing more but complete action because that's exactly what it is. So I'm just gonna tell you this right now. Now, if anybody is telling you that the human stories are great, the human characters are great, and you're watching it for that reason, they are lying to you. Do not listen to them. You do not watch this movie for other than the pure fact that it is just about fighting and destroying cities. That's all this is about. It's all about finally seeing King Kong and Godzilla finally clash. Usually in my movie reviews, I start from the beginning, I go to the end, and I somewhat explain the plot detail. Even just thinking about it right now is, is boring because I caught myself almost wanting to fast forward the film because all I wanted to watch was Godzilla fight Kong. And at the end of the movie, I knew they were gonna team up against Mecha Godzilla because they full of put that in the trailer. We all knew Mecha Godzilla was coming and that that was gonna be the main threat. Basically, Godzilla is the apex predator and he doesn't like his position being threatened and he knows King Kong threatens that position. So he needs to hunt him down and kill him or at least defeat him to make it known that like I'm I'm the god on earth. So then you know you have like this human corporation called Apex Cybernetics and they want to make their own type of Godzilla creature basically being like you know if those creatures are going to exist on earth we need some type of firepower of our own so that if things ever go sideways we have something ourselves and that answer is Mecha Godzilla who by the end of the movie just ends up being a bad idea because it ends up being processed from the energy of another monster that was an apex predator as well. I'm completely blanking on its name. If anyone knows the name, shoot it down in the comments below. I'm sorry. But regardless, it, like, it makes sense. The last thing I would ever want if we ever had a situation like that, I'm not going to sit here and, and rely on a giant lizard who breathes nuclear fire to protect Earth from danger because essentially they cause the danger too. You should see what they do to Hong Kong at the end of the film. Hong Kong will never recover from the fight that Kong and Zilla had and Mecha Godzilla. And you know, like Millie Bobby Brown, bro, great actress, you know, especially younger actress, but the writing was just piss poor. Millie's character and the two other characters that she's traveling with, they're literally mad that a corporation is trying to create a fail safe against a massive monster that tramples everything in its path because they'd rather put their trust in Godzilla, who does not care about humanity, by the way. He just he wants to keep to himself until another apex predator rises and will destroy anything in his path just to prove his egotistical point. The story's terrible. There's no doubt about that. It's really, really bad. You're not watching this movie for the story. You know, the CGI is great. The special effects are great. There's even one point in the movie where they got to go to Hollow Earth, which is this thing in the Godzilla universe. I guess in the middle of Earth, nearing the core, there's like another Earth in Earth, and it's like a prehistoric Earth. I guess that's where Godzilla and Kong come from, and when they go inside, Kong ends up finding a throne room that he used to sit on. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you know, you gotta throw reality out when you watch this movie, because it's not meant to make sense. It's just, this, like, you can't, you can't put any logic to this movie. That's not the point of what Godzilla and Kong is. Throw all of that out the window. Anyways, when they're down in Hollow Earth, Kong ends up getting, like, this axe, and I guess, like, it can eat up the energy of Godzilla's 
fire breath. I don't know if like maybe Kong's ancestors fought Godzilla or Godzilla's ancestors. I, I don't I don't really know. When Godzilla breathes, the axe can take in the energy, which powers up the axe now and makes the attacks more devastating. So I'm wondering like if they fought before and that's how King Kong knows to take the axe. I, I don't know. I don't know. But anyways, you know, the, the best part of the film is when they get to the end of the movie with the last like 25 minutes and they just fight each other in Hong Kong. Like I said, the city's absolutely demolished. It is a great fight scene. It's a lot of fun. Millions of people are dying in Hong Kong, just getting trampled on. Buildings are falling. Like it, it's just a complete mess but it's really, really cool. And I'm just gonna say right now, if anyone says that Godzilla lost that fight, you clearly did not watch the same movie. Godzilla beat Kong fair and square. So if there is somewhere on the internet, if there are sides, Team Godzilla and Team Kong, Team Godzilla won that all the way. He beat King Kong fair and square. But then when Mecha Godzilla comes in, he starts beating the shit out of Godzilla, which then of course makes Godzilla and King Kong have to come together to fight Mecha. The fight's cool. Now, with all of that being said, you probably either like this movie or don't like this movie. Here's the thing, it's a bad movie, but I like it. I watched this movie completely forgetting about the story. There's no story in the film. Just take that out of your head and just watch it for the action. I'm gonna give my rating for this film. Before I do, I'm gonna give my ratings for the other uh, Godzilla-verse movies they've created. So first of all, the first Godzilla in 2014, that one is the best movie of these Godzilla-verse films. I have that movie at an eight out of 10. I really like the first one because it's almost realistic in the sense of how humanity would be reacting to these giant monsters monsters on Earth, and it's really cool to have seen Godzilla not be there just to be there. He was only there because predators from the prehistoric age have started to make their way back onto the surface of Earth. And like Godzilla was not only like the apex predator, but like the protector of the Earth. Knowing that those creatures are alive, the Earth is no longer protected. The Earth is his domain and he needs to remove them. And I do really like the take that that movie had. But when you move into the future of these films, it just gets drastically crazier. Like some of the technology they were using in this new film, it almost feels like the first Godzilla should be a standalone movie. It should have nothing to do with these movies because it just feels so different, like the environment and the atmosphere. The second one, which is King of the Monsters or whatever, yeah, that one I didn't like. That one, so disappointing, that one sucks. I think I have that one sitting at a four out of 10 or something like that. I was so looking forward to the fight scenes in that movie and whereas some scenes in that film were actually pretty cool, the camera angles used in those films were just awful and they would like cut at points where monsters were fighting. It was just, it was bad. Then uh, there's Kong Skull Island. I think I gave that one like a four out of 10. You know, simply put, after you watch the Peter Jackson King Kong, nothing can beat that film when it comes to King Kong movies. Skull Island just wasn't it. It wasn't there and it didn't hold the same weight as that original King Kong. The first appearance of King Kong could have been in Kong versus Godzilla and I would have been like oh it's just King Kong like you did not need Skull Island at all so for the main event Godzilla vs Kong my review before I give it I'm going to show you what IMDB has given it currently the user review rating is a 6.4 out of 10 which is right around where I thought it would be. For Metascore, it is sitting at a 59 out of 100. Usually critic reviews are a lot lower than user reviews. So to be honest with you, I actually thought this movie would be sitting in the 40 range 
59 is a little higher than I thought it would be. Now, of course, you're all here for the certified TMM review, which I am going to be giving it a five out of 10. This movie is completely 50-50. You flip a coin and you're either on one side or the other. The least I could do is give this movie a five purely based off of action. And I know in this whole review, I've been basically saying throw out the entire idea of a story, of a blueprint of a film. Just throw it out the window, because it doesn't matter. But when it comes to reviewing films, of course it matters. No matter what film you're reviewing, it always will matter at the end of it. And the reason why it loses five points, five major points, is because there's no story, the characters are boring, the human scenes are useless and also boring again. The pacing is awful and the movie is wildly rushed the movie could have at least been i don't know two hours 15 minutes and this movie clocked in at 140 plus credits which is like 148 and i know the reason they probably shrunk the movie down a lot is because they all knew that we didn't really care about the humanized characters and stories which is true, but I still think you could have maybe added an extra 10 to 15 minutes of more action because don't give me this excuse that, oh, well, Hong Kong was already absolutely annihilated. You want them to destroy more? Yeah, I do. I don't care if all of the Western and Eastern sides of the world were absolutely destroyed. Give it to me. They built this up to be one massive big event. I can use any extra fighting that you could give me. But look, if you can take all of that and put it to the side and simply just sit down, grab a bag of chips or popcorn or chocolate or candy or whatever you want and just mindlessly shut down your mind for an hour 40 minutes just to watch some mindless action and fighting you'll enjoy this movie because i surely did especially when those parts came on screen but anyways everyone that is it for this movie review if you do like my content make sure to leave a like and subscribe so you can keep up to date with future content and until next time everyone i will talk to you all very soon